singing gets a pass um, because I can't hear you, but I promise you, I want to hear you. <laughs> I would never be judging you, um, but we're going to dive into today. Before I give any background information and introduction, all of that, I want us to just sing, and this is an echo song, but um, I won't be able to hear your echo. You will be able to hear your echo, so it's still partially a group song. <laughs> um, but before we do this song, I want you to do an experiment. Everybody who has your video open, put your hands up against the edge of your screen so that you can still see your screen. Look at that. It's almost as though we are touching hands. Okay? Put your hands up against the edge of that screen like you're going to patty cake with me. Okay, so there is a place, so Kim and Tara, we're pretending you can see each other and you've got your hands up, and um, so uh, raise hand, <laughs> I love it. Okay, so um, there's a place in the song where if we were all together, you can put your hands down and shake them out for a minute. <laughs> There's a place in the song where if we were all together, we would be getting up and shaking hands and doing a mixer and getting to know each other, okay? So um, <clears throat> given the fact that we can't hear each other's echoes and we can't actually get up and move and shake hands with each other, we're going to do the Zoom's best next ability, okay? <laughs> so... Like I said, get ready to be my echo, even though I can't hear you. In every land, in every land, there's a way to say, way to say, hello friend, hello friend, how are you today, how are you today? Now reach out your hands, reach out your hands, don't be shy, don't be shy. They'll say hello, they'll say hello when we say hi. Oh, Ruth, I feel your fingers. We say hi. In Greek, we say Kalimera, Kalimera. In Japanese, we say Konnichiwa, Konnichiwa. In Hindi, we say Namaste. Namaste. In Arabic, we say Marhaba. Well, things are different. Things are different from place to place, place to place. A rainbow color, a rainbow color in the human race, the human race. We're not the same. We're not the same, and that's okay, that's okay. It's probably a reason, probably a reason things are that way, things are that way. Get ready for the echoes. In French, we say bonjour, bonjour. In Swahili, we say jumbo, jumbo. In Russian, Terry, this is for you. We say privyet, privyet. In Hebrew, we say shalom. All around our world, all around our world, we will find, we will find, we'll make friends, we'll make We're kind, there's lots of ways, there's lots of ways to get things done, to get things done. We need everyone, we need everyone to help the world run, to help the world run. In Spanish we say, hola, hola. In Italian we say, ciao, ciao. German, we say Guten Tag, Guten Tag. In Mandarin, we say Ni Hao. So, 
Reach out your hand, reach out your hand now. Don't be shy, don't be shy. They'll say hello, they'll say hello when we say hi, when we say hi. Yes, reach out your hand, reach out your hand. Don't be shy, don't be shy. They'll say hello, they'll say hello when we say hi. <laughs> All right, somebody be my sound engineer and let me know that you could hear the guitar and the voice okay. It was all okay. All right, cool. So um, that's it. That's the entire workshop. That song just said it all, okay? <clears throat> However, we need lots of ways to say the same thing. Um, this workshop is obviously called Different is Not Dangerous which um, I, for years until about, I think, four years ago, three and a half years ago, I just called this workshop A Trip Around the World. And, um, and you know, the subtitle was still um, Teaching Compassion, Tolerance, and Inclusion Through Different Languaged Songs. Um, and then one day there was a little three-year-old boy in one of my preschool classes with a shirt that said different is not dangerous and full of flags from all over the world and I was like oh my goodness I am stealing that non copyrighted shirt um, and obviously <laughs> we anyone who has not been asleep for the last number of years knows that we are totally dealing with not just in this country, all over the world, we are dealing with a phenomena of um, kind of resurgent tribalism um, that uh, if you're not like me, then I don't like you and I am afraid of you. Um, and I, my background is um, I lived for many, many years, um, the end of my childhood into my my parenting years, I lived in Israel, where I, before I was, um, before I took the dive and um, became a children's musician and a children's music teacher, I um, worked in Jewish Arab relations. So, um, and as, as my husband and I like to say, we tried. <laughs> and, and thank goodness there are still people trying. Um, but, um, so my, my first professional experience as a young adult was working in cross-cultural work. And right away, I learned that what is absolutely obvious to me is not absolutely obvious to someone from a different culture, even to the degree of um, uh, certainly what you say and when you say it but also how you say it and body language gets interpreted in so many different ways and we make so many cultural faux pas simply because we don't know because obviously we all come out of our own culture and we don't know that something might be offensive to another culture. So um, I'm sure you've all heard the term going around when you know better you do better. Okay, so um, we can't we can't um, fix things that we did in the past because we didn't know, but we can certainly move forward knowing better once we know. And that requires some stretching and some challenge. So um, fast forward from my years working in Jewish Arab relations after I was already a, a mother and a music educator. Um, as a mu music educator, I somehow got the reputation of being the piano teacher who could teach anybody. Um, so I had a lot of kids that got kicked out of other piano teachers' studios because they couldn't focus in the way that was expected, they didn't practice in the way that was expected, and so I early on learned to accommodate different learning styles. And that was last week's workshop. So I won't talk too much about that because <laughs> I know some of you are here. <laughs> um, 
and into my own life in 1995. Um, I had my first child in 1993. She was one of those babies who followed the book. She did everything according to the developmental stages, right on time. Sometimes she was a little early. She was moving forward. And then in 1995, um, I had my son and um, got a 10 on the APGAR, um, but nothing else seemed to follow the book. <laughs> and um, very early on, I realized that he had autism. And um, I'm going to admit joy. Um, <clears throat> So, um, so I was catapulted in as a mother into the world of not just being an educator for people with autism and learning disabilities, but also being on the back end and seeing what happened. Susan's shaking her head. <laughs> Do you know this experience, Susan? <laughs> um, so, so that, you know, as I said last week, that informed my teaching in a way that absolutely nothing else ever could have. Because I realized what those kids were walking into the classroom with. You know, a child doesn't start their day when I see them in the classroom or in my music lesson. Yeah, they sounds, start the day when they get up in the morning and uh, life is a little tricky. So that would cater for... Joy, you got... There we go. <laughs> so, um... So all of this pulled together for me, my, my, my background as a human being before I became a parent and a teacher was in cross-cultural work. And then as I stepped into the role of being a music teacher, um, I was looking at what, you know, what ways could I do that? So when I was a music teacher in Israel, I was doing stuff in Hebrew and Arabic and English and all kinds of other languages. Okay, <clears throat> um, and I was working with Israeli children and Palestinian children, and for all of them, the message was the same with slight different tweaks of, hey, the big people might be having trouble, but we can actually figure out a way to get beyond that trouble. Um, and that, I know, is much easier said than done for anyone. <clears throat> Um, so that sounds like a simplistic uh, sentence, but I truly believe in it. And then I came to the United States in 1998 and started learning a whole different repertoire of children's music and ways to engage children here. And I realized, of course, that the issue here was not Jewish Arab. Um, it's, it's racial. And, um, and that was... Um, 22 years ago. Um, and um, I naively had thought that the racial issues had gone away in the United States in the 1960s, because hey, <laughs> that's what we all read about in history. Um, but we all know that that's not true. And now it's like totally on the table. And I always say, as painful as it is to see something on the table, um, it is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly helpful because it can't be ignored anymore. And so I, as awful as things are right now in so many ways, I am incredibly hopeful that this is where we can, especially as educators, start to turn um, that message of different is not dangerous into real life for kids. So that is the background of what we're about to do. And what I'm gonna, in a minute, I'm gonna share um, my PowerPoint. And what I would really love is um, for you guys to participate in a bit of a conversation before we dive into the music. Um, this is a collection of music of different languages. And, you know, right away people go, I don't speak any other languages, which is honestly a, a reason to be. To be concerned but all of these songs are very very simple songs they are all online they are all songs that you can hear um, again and again and again and I'm sure um, you know I didn't do my housekeeping which I would have done if we were live how many of you are actively preschool teachers now just you can put up a hand okay um, <laughs> I love how Tara, I love how Tara is raising her hands. Um, and, um, how many of you are K through 12 teachers? 
Okay. Um, yes, Ruth, there will be a handout. Okay. You will get the handout afterwards with all of the lyrics in the um, in the handouts. Okay. So, and, and you'll see the lyrics to most of the songs on the PowerPoint once we get to the songs. Okay. So you can sing along. Um, um, how many of you are um, music art specialists? So not classroom teachers, but okay, cool. Alrighty. And, um, oh, there's another Joni Kalem here. Hi. <laughs> Somebody else is, I, I don't know who that is. Um, <laughs> um, so what I would like us to look at now, I'm going to go to screen sharing. And I'm going to, how do I move this? Oh, that's the only thing, Molly. How do I move this along? Aha! Okay. So this is, um, this is my background. We don't need to read this. You can read it later. Um, where is my, there we go. Okay. So I am a, can everybody see this okay? Okay. Um, so we all know that phrase, familiarity breeds contempt. Okay. And it's a very negative view of human beings. Um, and it's obviously true in, in many circumstances. But I feel as educators that we can really turn this around and turn it into familiarity, familiarity breeds understanding. But not just plopping kids down and saying, oh, get to know this, this person who looks different than you. Kids need guidance. Kids need direct messaging. Kids need direct um, lessons. Kids need adults in the room who are not um, working off of their own biases and their own fears, but have already examined those things or are present progressive examining those areas in themselves so that they can guide children to a place um, that is not a place of bias, not a place of racism, not a place of hatred or fear, okay? So again, I don't wanna uh, sit and read this because this is something you guys can go over later, but that's just the high level. So what I would like us to think about is the who, what, where, when, why, and how of sharing songs in other languages. Molly, do people have the ability to unmute themselves or would you rather would, would you um, like that would be your preference, Joni. I think I can set it up so they can do that. Or, me... or someone, I mean, we can also just do that someone can raise their hand and can you see everybody when I'm screen sharing? I think. Because what I would love to do, if possible, is, um, so who, who can share songs in different languages? Anybody? Want to unmute and, and tell us? Catherine, you were unmuted. Go ahead and unmute again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just saying that initially that I could unmute and, and speak, but are you asking for like examples of other songs or who just in general can? Just who in general? So if you're looking at those, you know, those those W questions, mm -hmm. so who, who can share songs? I think the beauty of music is that anyone can share songs. And um, I think that, and I've always learned really well from children um, from different cultures and they've been exposed to their music and their cultures for so long that we can learn from them and incorporate that into um, our work in classrooms. Exactly, 10 points, great answer. <laughs> there is no wrong answer. Um, so, um, yes, and I and love, also... love, love, sorry, Terry, one second. Um, and I absolutely love that um, Catherine mentioned learning from the children in our classroom because I, I speak two languages um, fluently. There are a bazillion other languages, and I love giving children who would like it that spotlight to shine in their own language and therefore support them and their sharing. Terry, go ahead. Well, I'm just gonna say parents and grandparents can yes. be invited in. Yes. 
And yes. that's a beautiful thing. Yes, absolutely. With the absolute right introductions and support and follow up, because and, we all know. And context. And I context. think context is really important. Yes, yes. As an ethnomusicologist, I, I look at it in a, the broader picture. They have to understand why those songs were sung, when and where, with whom. Right. Cool. Um, we we can we can tap you again later on on that level. <laughs> so um, so I know that I'm sure I'm not the only one who has run into the situation of sharing a song in another language and having three year olds sit there and snort and roll around and say that's weird, that's stupid. <clears throat> So, of course, that is a moment of learning. <laughs> that is one of those teaching opportunities. And, um, and you know, what I often do in that, in that um, situation is talk about words in English that mean something very different in another language um, and vice versa. And so um, there's just endless... Um, I'm trying to find where I, there we go. Okay, so what? What are songs that are easy for people who do not feel super comfortable in lots of other languages to share, okay? Um, simple songs. The same kinds of songs that we sing in English to teach children things exist in every language, okay? So Terry was just mentioning context, why songs are sung in another language. Well, preschool and school and learning happens everywhere around the world. So the same songs that we use here to teach children, somebody unmute and tell me what are, what are regular topics that people are teaching about in song in a preschool class? Lullabies. What else? Clean up. Numbers, shapes, colors. Exactly. Numbers, shapes, colors, clean up, okay? Parts All of the body. Parts of the body. Animals. Friendship. Friendship, exactly. Brushing your teeth. <laughs> Sorry, say it again. Brushing your teeth. I'm brushing your teeth. <laughs> I don't have any of those in here. All right, note to self, okay? And washing. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so you're looking for songs that are going to fit into what you're teaching anyway. Because, because nine times out of ten, those songs are also going to be on a language level that is very simple for a non-speaker of that language to learn. Okay? Um, okay, where? I'm being really snotty here. Everywhere. Okay? <laughs> like, and when so um <laughs> Catherine says all the time <laughs> like, so this is where you know you get into research and um academics telling you when is the right time for a child to hear another language well my kids you know they were from day one they were hearing three different languages um at home, my husband and I spoke English. As soon as they walked out in the street, they were inundated with Hebrew, and um, and they were hearing Arabic all the time when we were with our Palestinian friends. So, so right away from the time they were zero, that was what was around them. Um, and so there are theories that say, oh, that's best. There are theories that say, no, you have to wait. Obviously, in um, in most countries all over Europe. I know, for instance, in Israel, ch um, Israeli children st uh, start to learn Arabic and English in third and fourth grade. Um, the American concept for many, many years was what? We wait until middle school, okay? Now there are immersion schools, and now there are many schools that are starting earlier on. So I honestly don't think I mean, I'm, I'm learning Spanish as an adult. I, you know, there's, I don't believe this thing of a window of learning closes. I believe that there are times when things are easier. 
But the idea here is also not necessarily that children are going to become fluent in any of these languages that we are presenting. This is to familiarize with the idea that there are different languages and that just the way I say something in one language, there's another way to say it. So different vis-a-vis -vis speaking and names of things is not dangerous, okay? Does anybody have anything to add about that in terms of when? Okay, moving on. Why? Okay, and to me, of course, this is the point. Um, the earlier a child learns that there are multiple ways to say things, the deeper that understanding goes that difference is not bad, difference is not scary, there is more than one way to say something, therefore there is more than one way to do something. The world is full of variety, music is full of different sounds, okay, not just the major scales, which most children's um, uh, um, English-speaking children's songs are usually written in major scales, except for the lullabies that Terry mentioned. Um, but there is more than just major and minor. And that's like a whole head thing. And then again, you'll have the kids going, that's weird. That sounds strange. And, you know, for me, that's like, well, you know, that little boy sitting in India who's used to a 13-note um, a scale just really hears our music as kind of odd as well. Um, and hearing language other than their own is not a reason not to communicate, okay? Which is another thing that obviously all of us kind of shut down when we think there's no way to connect with someone if we don't speak their language. But there's so many other ways to communicate, and that is what I'm always looking to teach children. And then just bringing it to Ohio, I mean, our classrooms are full of, I'm going to stop screen share just for a minute so I can see everybody. And um, just raise your hands how many of you have kids um, from other backgrounds in your classes. Okay, so how many of you have kids that are speaking other languages at home? Okay, now I don't know about the kids in your classes. I, I know. So, so other Joni Kalem, what's your name? Just so I know. <laughs> she, she doesn't know. <laughs> um, never mind. Um, so um, my children, my children, um, oh, they were five and three when we moved from Israel to here. My daughter had only spoken Hebrew. Um, and every once in a while, she'd try and put together a sentence in English to speak to her grandparents. It never worked very well. When she got here, within a week, she refused to speak Hebrew. Within two weeks, she claimed she didn't understand Hebrew. Um, and then she went through this interesting experience of seeing videos of herself from pre-America time that she couldn't understand what she was saying in the video. And that made her so angry that as a teenager, she forced us to only speak to her in Hebrew for an entire summer, and it came back. But, but kids often are trying very hard to adapt. So obviously, um, we also run into children in our classrooms who we know are speaking another language at home, but they won't speak it in school because they want to be like everybody else. And so we have this opportunity to invite them to honor and respect and love and cherish where they're coming from and who they are, okay? Um, I'm gonna go back to screen sharing. There it is. Um, okay, and how, okay? So, Oh, I hope this isn't somebody else trying to get into the... <laughs> All right, I'm not going to answer. Um, so I hope it isn't someone else trying to get into the workshop. Um, <clears throat> so how? I don't, I don't have any notifications that someone is. So. No, but it might be someone who signed up through Okra again. Okay. So um, <clears throat> I will circle back with them. 
So how? Like we already mentioned, okay, the what? Choose a song with a repetitive pattern. Attach a movement to that pattern. Choose an echo song. Teach a song with pictures or puppets. Um, initially, teach only one part of the song in the original language and translate the rest and make it a, um, a staggered learning process, right? <clears throat> Call and response songs where the kids and the audience is responding with just one thing over and over. And then find picture books in different languages, okay? Does anybody have any other suggestions that they have used that they would want to add to this. Go ahead and unmute if you do. Okay. So, I'm gonna move on. Can't find my cursor. There it is. Okay. So, we already did this song. <clears throat> we're gonna do this at the end, and this is where we're gonna start. Okay. Um, has anybody heard of John Kinderman Taylor? <clears throat> He was a Baltimore musician. Um, he was an African-American man who, um, he passed away, I think it was about three years ago. And he was just a beloved, beloved human being in Baltimore. And um, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move this over so that I can see more of you. There we go, okay. Um, I never know. Are you just seeing the screen now? So you're not seeing each of you on my screen. Okay, cool. Alrighty. So, um, friends, all right? Um, to teach that different is not dangerous, we do have to go beyond just the concept of being kind and making friends, okay? It is a little more complicated than that because we're not all friends. We don't all like each other, whether we're from the same background or not. That's just the plain truth. And obviously any preschool teacher is very familiar with the refrain of, he's not my friend. I'm not gonna play with him because she's not my friend, right? So, so this is very simplistic and it's just step one, but it's a great song. <laughs> I, I always want to just add the caveat that I know this isn't the whole picture, <laughs> but as you, as you, we're going to do the song a couple times and then we'll put it in a couple different languages. And if anybody um, knows a different language that is not mentioned, go ahead and see if you can translate it for all the rest of us. Remember, there is no judgment about singing here, okay? So it goes, friends, friends. One, two, three, all my friends are here with me. You're my friend, you're my friend, you're my friend, you're my friend. Friends, friends, one, two, three, all my friends are here with me. So even though I can't see you, see, hear you, I can see you, I can't hear you, everybody sing along with that so you get this into your vocal muscles. Friends, friends, one, two, three, all my friends are here with me. You're my friend, you're my friend, you're my friend, you're my friend. Friends, friends, one, two, three, all my friends are here with me. So, Hang on, I'm gonna move you guys up so that I can advance this. So Spanish, okay? Spanish, how many of you have children from Spanish speaking homes in your classes? That is when we were having classes. <laughs> so, amigos, amigos, uno, dos, tres, Todos mis amigos están aquí conmigo. Tú eres mi amigo, tú eres mi amiga, tú eres mi amigo, tú eres mi amiga. Amigos, amigos, uno, dos, tres. Todos mis amigos están aquí conmigo. What do we right away run into in Spanish that we don't have in English? Gender. Gender. 
in the way. Gender, which is, of course, whoops. Um, oop. <laughs> All right, hang on. <laughs> I don't know. How do I get back, Molly? <laughs> like, hang on. I'm going to go. Um, I was using my like left and right arrows to go back and forth. Mm. Sorry, everybody. Your left and right arrows. Like on my keyboard? Yeah. He's not doing that. You can also, if you scroll down, sometimes a bar comes up for you that shows you. Um, oh, but I can advance it like that. Okay. So I can also unadvance it like that. Got it. Thank you. Got it. Cool. <laughs> All righty. Um, so yes, we right away, right away run into gender. And um, I'm sure many of you have, like me, been doing lots of thinking about language so that we are not doing, um, making gender assumptions with children, um, which, you know, again, this is something that was not part of my education training um, 35 years ago. Um, so I'm always grateful that stuff is, is advancing in terms of the intentionality and the thought that we need to put into, um, into our teaching. So, um, I've got here German, I've got here Arabic, I put in the languages that um, were represented in the classrooms I was teaching in at the time I first put this PowerPoint together. Um, I also have here, <clears throat> which I will be sharing with you later on, um, a handout that my friend Mara Beckerman out in California put together with 30 different languages. Okay, so it's a great kind of take it into the classroom. Um, obviously, as we saw, the song worked really well in English. It was a little harder in Spanish. Um, in Arabic, Azdika, Azdika, Wahatnentalate, Little different. Another language that is gendered. Okay, so we've got Sadiki is a male friend. Sadikti is a female friend. All right. Um, but again, you can find this song online um, for anyone who is, um, uh, works best with sheet music. Just contact me. I have the sheet music for it. Or Terry probably just wrote it out while she was sitting here. <laughs> like, um, so, so any thoughts, any questions? How about what could you do with this? Super simple. What can you do with this in terms of adding motions? Susan, you could unmute. When you repeat it, you could like point at friends. Exactly. Like, like to do that. Exactly. Exactly. And I always add to that, make sure there's no one in the circle who's left out. Okay. So planting that seed for kids that don't just don't just point at your usual friends okay and think about is anyone being left out make sure that everyone's included in that pointing terry when i play anything with pointing i don't know if anyone can see me probably not but i say that there are lots of different ways to point with different parts of the body. So can you point with your elbow? Can you point with your nose? Can you point with the top of your head? Can you point with your knee? Excellent. So you're getting a whole other lesson in there. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. What else? What's something else super, super simple? That can all, all kinds of body percussion. All kinds of body percussion. Yep. Make up your own or do the same one everyone together. Right. Anybody else? 
you could do different body percussions for the boyfriends and the girlfriends. Cool. Okay. How about Wahad Mantalate? Okay. The numbers. The numbers repeat themselves in every language. So right there, kids are going, oh, this isn't just one. This could be Wahad. This could be Uno. This could be Eins. This could be a Had. That's Hebrew. Okay. So, um, oh, you know, the other thing I do want to say about um, the good thing about Mara's handout is she didn't just put this through Google Translate. Okay. Because I don't know about any of you who have ever tried to use Google Translate. Um, as a Hebrew speaker, I'm always really amused when I send something I've written in English through Google Translate into Hebrew. So it's not always accurate. <laughs> it's great for single word pronunciation, <laughs> but not entire songs. So um, Mara did actually work on that sheet with native speakers of each language. Okay, But teaching children that there are different ways to count is, is another one of those Okay, cool. Oh, and there's a child that can sing along with us. Oh my goodness, Christina, she's adorable. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, she was calling for me. <laughs> that's totally fine. All right, that's the good thing about being at a teacher's workshop on Zoom. Okay, so any other thoughts about this song before we move on? Does anybody want to translate it to another language that they might know? Terry, you want to do Russian? <laughs> yeah, I'd have to, because it's druk is boy, padruga is a girl. So I'd have to think about the syllabification and the melody. Right. I don't think I could do it spontaneously. I'm just trying to see if it's on my handout. Yeah, and one, two, three is usually ras, dva, tri. Ah, interesting. Uh, like, instead of adin, which is one, it's yeah. ras. So ras because it's the first. Yeah, it means it sort of means time. I don't know how to describe it. Like okay. once, well, I don't know how to describe it. But okay, well, I I just offer that because I know Terry's um, studying Russian. Okay, all right. So let's go on. All right, this is one of my very very favorite songs that I use. I use this in performances with adults, okay? Um, this is a Cajun song. Um, and is everybody familiar with the Cajun language and people from Louisiana? Anybody? Okay. So um, the Cajun uh, traditionally spoke uh, their, their kind of French, which in this particular case just sounds like French. Um, although there are many, many parts of their language that I don't sound like French is spoken in France. Um, so you see where you're supposed to clap, okay? And bonjour, mes amis, bonjour. Bonjour, mes amis, bonjour. Bonjour, mes amis, bonjour, mes amis, bonjour, mes amis, bonjour. Bonjour, mes amis. Hello to my friends, hello. Hello to my friends, hello. Hello to my friends, hello to my friends. Hello to my friends, hello. Hello to my friends. Okay, so what are some of the other things we can do with this? Instead of just saying my friends, bonjour, Catherine, bonjour and wave when I say your name. Bonjour, Ruth, bonjour. Bonjour, Christina and her baby. Bonjour, Susan and Terry. Bonjour, mes amis, bonjour. Bonjour to Keisha, bonjour. Bonjour to Julia, who's down here. Hang on, who's the last one? Oh, I can't see it. Bonjour to Tara or Tara. And you who are listed at Joni Calum, unmute and tell me what your name is. Can 
Can you retype it? All right. Bonjour, mes amis. Bonjour. Bonjour, mes amis. Bonjour. Bonjour, mes amis. Bonjour, mes amis. Bonjour, mes amis. Bonjour. Bonjour, mes amis. So it can be used in circle time. It can be used as um, an active song. Okay, you start off with just clapping and then you stand up instead of clapping, you're jumping. And instead of jumping, you're clapping hands with somebody. It can be a mixer so that you're moving around the room and every time um, you have to clap, you're gonna clap with someone else. You're gonna turn in another direction and um, Rule number one in all of my mixers are, you don't have to be best friends with the person you're clapping hands with, but you do have to clap hands with the person who's right next to you, which of course, you know, then they try to strategize and make sure they're always right next to their friend. And so then the next instruction is, and every single time you're gonna clap hands, you're gonna clap hands with someone different and make sure no one is left out. So. I do sound like a broken record quite often. All righty. So <clears throat> this is a song from, um, from Ghana. And um, this, I use this as a way to show children that body language means different things in different places. Okay. Um, and this is, you know, this is not a song that um, everybody walks around in Ghana saying all the time. <laughs> um, so I, you know, I tell children that as well, you know, in Ghana, many people just walk up and say hi, right? Okay, but this is a beautiful way of adding um, some ideas about different body language. So the A here means open hands, okay? And because we're on Zoom, um, who can tell me, in, in many other cultures, what does an open hand mean? In fact, what was the, um, the origin of why Westerners shake hands? Does anybody know? Susan, can you unmute? I see you're answering, but. You don't have a weapon, you're in peace. Exactly, I come in peace, okay? So open hands, T is together, okay? Now, this is a great um, <clears throat> touching <laughs> song, which obviously we can't do right now, even with, with each other or with our, our, our students. But B would be, I would be touching the backs of my hands to somebody else, okay? So we'll do it on the screen, okay? And we're gonna go, so ri da, so ri da, ri da, ri da, so ri da. So ri da, ri da, ri da. Ah, then right, left together, right. I forgot to tell you that. Left together, back together, back together. All right, so we'll do it. Um, so the R and the L are right and left. Let's go from the beginning. And obviously the right and left is getting kids. I mean, that's got all kinds of learning stuff. It's got kids crossing that midline. It's got kids identifying right and left. It doesn't go smooth at the beginning with any age, even 15 year olds are like, um, so, so it's all a learning process. So from the beginning, so ri da, so ri da, ri da, ri da, so ri da, so ri da, ri da, ri da, 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 da. Rida, Rida. And that last part, we're going to make it really silly on Zoom. That last um, part where it's right, left, together, as though we would be patty caking. We've got another Joni Kalem joining us. That's amazing. I had no idea there were so many of me. Okay. Um, so um, we're going to do it one more time with the right, left, together, as though we're patty caking each other. And sing along so you get it into your vocal memory, okay? So ri da, so ri da, ri da, ri da, so ri da, so ri da, 
Rita, Rita, da, 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 Rita, Rita, repeat that, da, 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 Rita, oops, Rita, Rita. Okay, any questions, any thoughts, any ideas of, oh, when you would use this? So our friend that just joined, who is labeled Joni Kalem, um, you can relabel your name and um, welcome. <laughs> we are jumping into another greeting song. This one is from South Africa. And um, the translation is just, hello sisters, hello brothers, asite dumela, Abute dumela. All right, and it's a dance. Um, but we can't dance right now, so I'm just gonna tell you how we do it. We'll start out with just clapping on dumela. Okay, so asite dumela, abute dumela, asite dumela, abute dumela, asite dumela, abute dumela. And it just goes on. Now the dance, um, <clears throat> looking forward to days when we will be able to dance with our children again, okay, um, is you're gonna stomp, asite dumela, and then you move over to the next person, abute dumela, and then you keep on going. So you can do it as just a mixer, you can do it as two lines, and that was the way it was traditionally done in South Africa, was it would be two lines of people facing each other. Um, sorry, not two lines of people, two concentric circles facing each other. And so um, the inside circle would move to the left and the outside circle would move to the right. Okay, great. <laughs> I, I'm very dyslexic with right and left. So the outside circle would go to the right and the inside circle. No, because, that, no, everybody's moving to the right. <laughs> Otherwise, you're always with the same partner. So each time, it's asite dumela, and then you move. Abute dumela, and you keep moving. Asite dumela, abute dumela. So obviously, this can also be a great circle time hello song. Chelsea dumela. Roger Dumela, I can't see what name I've got there. Imani Dumela, etc., etc. Okay. Um, anybody got any thoughts, any questions? Gotta look at our time, don't I? My goodness. All right. Any thoughts, any questions? Okay. So, this is. Um, yeah, Sierra. Okay. Um, so this is a counting song, all right? And it's also a call and response song. <clears throat> so you're gonna see what we're spelling here. Uno, dos, tres, cho. Uno, dos, tres, co. Uno, dos, tres, la. Uno, dos, tres, te. Chocolate, chocolate, bate, bate, chocolate, 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 bate, bate, chocolate. So has anybody ever been um, to a South American country and been handed um, for breakfast this amazing hot chocolate? It's like not like American hot chocolate. It's not super, super, super crazy sweet. It's more like a common, it's like the rough chocolate. So it's, um, it's an amazing coffee experience, <laughs> um, but it is a traditional morning drink, okay? So let's do this a couple more times. And obviously, okay, what are some of the movements that we can add? Uno, dos, tres, cho. Uno, dos, tres, co. Uno, dos, tres, la. Uno, dos, tres, te. Chocolate, chocolate, bate, bate. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Bate, bate, chocolate. Bate is stirring, okay? And this was a work song 
because this particular um, chocolate drink was made in these huge, huge vats um, and then served out to whoever came to get some. So the bate bate is the stirring part. And it was a song that was sung quite often by people who were in the process of stirring this big chocolate drink. Terry, I see you're un, un, uh, unmuted. What oh. do you want to add? Well, I just got this vision, so you could do, no one can see me, but no, we can. Um, we can on Cho, you can, like it, it's a partner, partner dance. So your partner could, you could pick, Cho could be this, uh, Ko could be that, La could be this, and take could your be, hands higher, that we can't see. Um, what was it? What was it? Okay, so clap your partner's hands, um, clap your partner's shoulders, open your hands to your partner, and then te could be your head. So then when you do chocolate, chocolate, you have to do it really quickly. Oh, wow. <laughs> so uno, dos, tres, you choose something with your partner. Uno, dos, tres. You, do you understand? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, it's I will have to. Good, I, it's I, will good, not, I will not try and do that now, but I love that idea. <laughs> but, but the thing is, it's a great way for kids to collaborate for some a very short activity. Right. Quickly right. throw out five, uh, four body percussions that you can do with your partner. And then bate bate, you could do the stirring motion. Or you could turn your body around. Right, right. Um, so I often do this as a music specialist. I um, usually do this with drums. Um, oh. So that the kids are doing uno, dos, tres, cho. Uno, dos, tres, co. Uno, dos, tres, la. Uno, dos, tres, te, and then chocolate, chocolate, bate, bate, chocolate. So, and they have different rhythms, and it's an amazing kind of prep song for drumming as well. And I do that with um, three-year-olds and up. Um, takes a while for them to get that hand coordination to only um, play on the cho, but they get it. Okay. Any questions, any thoughts? Thank you, Terry. I love these ideas. Okay, circle games, right? Every culture has circle games. Um, uh, lots of adults <clears throat> don't like uh, dancing in a circle or spinning around because as we age, our brain fluid changes. And so we all know that um, we get dizzy. <laughs> which is something that we did not do, we did not feel when we were younger. And um, part of my learning as a parent of someone with autism was um, learning about sensory processing disorder. And that was last week's workshop. And um, uh, part of what I discovered, and I don't know if people have noticed this, but of course, playgrounds are not quite the same as they were when most of us were younger. I know some of you are much younger than me, but I think the, the playgrounds changed even after your childhood, um, where, um, shoot, what are they called? Merry-go-rounds are no longer on because kids got hurt, which is totally true. However, merry-go-rounds were also incredibly, incredibly important for brain development and spinning is incredibly important for brain development. And so, you know, obviously we sometimes have the children in our classes who are just spinning all the time. And um, something, you know, from last week's workshop is that they are doing that because that helps ground them. They're not, the, the dizziness is an experience that is not, um, not pleasurable to them. It is absolutely helpful to them and that's why they're doing it. You know, I can't spin like that anymore, but I know that was one of my favorite things. Does anybody remember there was this old movie called Parenthood with Steve Martin? <laughs> Ruth, do you remember the part where the, one of the kids is always spinning and all the adults are like, what is wrong with this kid? You know, and I, with my eyes, I'm looking at it going, what a brilliant kid. He knows exactly what he needs. <laughs> like, so, please don't stop him from spinning. 
But so spinning games, circle games, circle dances are something that exists in every culture. And this is um, one from Brazil. Now, the thing I love about this one, <clears throat> which I can't show you very well because we're not all together, but I will show you with myself. Um, so, Ciranda Cirandina. Ciranda Cirandina, vamos todos Ciranda. Vamos dar a Maya volta, volte Maya, vamos dar. So what happens? I'm going to be turning around. Siranda, Sirandina, vamos todo Siranda. Vamos dar a Maya volta, volta Maya, vamos dar. So mid song, mid circle, you turn and go the other way, okay? which is a great exercise for children when they're working alone and all as a, a, a group circle, it's a sure, um, a, a surefire result in everybody falling down and laughing, okay? Um, although the, there's always the kids who don't like falling down, right? So we have to include them as well. But point being that you turn the opposite direction on voltai. So let's just do it. Instead of full body, let's do it small body motions, okay? So get your hands moving. Siranda, sirandina, vamos todos sirandar. Vamos dar a Maya, volta, volta a Maya, vamos dar. So you, you teach that change direction, okay? Which has all kinds of great brain effects and it's just plain fun. Any questions? Okay. So, now we're going to a language that I do speak proficiently. Um, so this is um, a circle game from Israel. It is often um, sung at birthday parties because it's about cake. And um, the thing I love about this you will see how different it is than Ring Around the Rosie, okay? So it goes, Uga, 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 Bema Agal Nehuga, Nesto Veva Kohayom, Ada Shernim Sama Kom, La Shevit Lakum, La Shevit Lakum, La Shevit Vilakum. So, how do I end up? The end of the song is I'm standing up as opposed to Ring Around the Rosie, where I end up on the floor. Okay? Um, Tony, can, can we look at you do it? Because all we see is the words. We can't see you dance. Oh! I had no idea you couldn't see me. I apologize. I've been doing if you. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was going to say, Terry, if you go into your view options when she's screen sharing and you click exit full screen, you'll be able to get the slides and then the um, videos of everyone above them too. Well, I don't want the slides. I want to see her dancing. You can see it, her dancing. You can make her um, larger. Oh, so you can okay. control what you're looking at. Okay, thank you. <laughs> but I'll stay like this now anyway. Okay, and then we'll go back. So, um, so you're, you're holding hands, right? Except during COVID. And, um, and if it's during COVID, you're not holding hands, but you can still be standing in a circle six feet apart. I don't know how we're gonna do this. All right. So, so, ooga, 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 bima agalna hooga, nesto veva kol hayom. So you end up standing up as opposed to um, in a pile on the floor in Ring Around the Rosie, okay? Um, now, what if we were going to break that down and only take one part of it? Okay, let me go back to the screen sharing. <clears throat> so what would be the part that would be easiest for the kids to get and for you as teachers to sing? So unmute if you've got an idea, Catherine. 
Oh, nope. <laughs> it's okay. Anybody? Okay. Well, for, for I owe, Susan, do you have an idea? I would sing about the cake because every kid love, would love to know that Uga means cake. <laughs> I'm obsessed with cake. <laughs> so, so you're going to go, Uga, 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 we dance around the cake. We'll dance around it all the day until we find a place to sit, then get to sit, then get up to sit. Then get up to sit and then get up. Okay, I love that idea. I would have chosen, and I have always chosen, but next time I'm going to make sure I choose differently. Um, I always choose the la shevit la cum, la shevit la cum, because that has that automatic physical reinforcement of the word. Okay. So it's it's a it's an action learning. Anybody got a, a different way they would do it? Okay. All right. Um let's go. Okay. Um now I'm actually looking at our time. I think we're gonna we're gonna start to skip ahead, <clears throat> but you will you will get the full PowerPoint. So, um, you know, if there's things that we haven't done, um, you can come back and um, either contact me for links or look up stuff on YouTube. Um, Sur le Pont d'Avignon, a song from France, also a, um, a circle song, also a song that has some gender issues um, because it talks about the, the sweet boys and the pretty girls. Um, and, you know, when I was a new teacher teaching in Israel in 1983, um, this was a blast for kids. You know, it had boys moving to the forward and then boys moving back and then girls moving to the forward and girls moving back. I wouldn't do that now. Okay. So, um, but it's a great song. Um, is there anybody that doesn't know this song. This one's a more common. Okay, let me just sing it. Sur le pont de Avignon, l'on y danse, l'on y danse. Sur le pont de Avignon, l'on y danse, tout est noir. Les beaux messieurs font comme ça, et puis encore comme ça. Sur le pont de Avignon, Loni danse, loni danse, etc., etc. Now, the good thing about this song is that you take out those verses and you still have tons of things that the kids can do. Les soldats is pretend you're a soldier, although obviously lots of people might not want to do that now either. Um, les musiciens, pretend you're a musician and choose what um, instrument you'd like to play. Les grenouilles are frogs. Les gorilles, gorillas, okay? And so, you know, turn it into a learning about animals song in, Fran in French. Um, turn it about into learning about jobs in French. So you can put in, um, and if I have butchered the French, I for please forgive me. There we go. Okay. Um, we're going to, I want to, yes. <laughs> Actually, we're going to do... Let's do this one. No, let's do this one. Okay. Um, so, uh, body parts. That was one of the things, of course, that we had mentioned. And, and uh, some of those songs that we just passed over were also other body part songs in um, other languages. Um, but we're going to do this one. Start with one finger. Don Alfredo baila, 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 baila. Don Alfredo baila, baila con el dedo, con el dedo, dedo, dedo. Así baila Don Alfredo. 
but he's not just dancing with his finger. Don Alfredo baila, 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 baila. Don Alfredo baila, baila con la mano, con la mano, 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 con el dedo, dedo, dedo. Así baila Don Alfredo. His whole arm now. Don Alfredo baila, 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 baila. Don Alfredo baila, bailo con el brazo, con el brazo, 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 con la mano, 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 con el dedo, 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 así baila Don Alfredo. And his chest, and obviously you add as many body parts as you want to teach on that particular day, okay? Um, Terry, I'm sure you have a lot of ideas of what you could do with movement with this one. <laughs> All right, we're gonna skip that. Um, okay, so animal songs. Old MacDonald. This is um, a uh, South American song. I'm just gonna move this to the side. Um, let me get my guitar. We'll play this one. <clears throat> Vengan a ver mi chakra, que es hermosa. Vengan a ver mi chakra, que es hermosa. El pollito hace así. Pio, pio. El pollito hace así. Pio, pio. Oh, ven camarada, ven camarada, ven a oh, ven. Oh, Ven camarada, ven camarada, ven, oh, ven, oh, ven. So you can put any animals in. I love, one of the things I love the most about teaching, um, uh, teaching children about animals in other languages is that the animals themselves also say different things in the different languages. So cows are pretty consistently moo. I have not run into any cow in any language that does not say moo. But other than that, um, ducks do not say quack quack. Frogs do not say ribbit in any other language. And that in itself for kids are like, what? No, frogs say ribbit, to which I always respond, have you ever heard a frog say ribbit? I mean, you know, at night when you're listening to the frogs, have you ever heard a frog say ribbit? So, so this song in itself, forget about all the other um, bits about, you know, the, how important it is to hear something in another language, but the animals themselves have different names and say something different than what they say in English. Um, does anybody recognize this tune? Because it is a tune in English as well. It has been translated to English. Anybody? No? In English, it's, um, um, we're on our way, we're on our way, on our way to Grandpa's farm. We're on our way, we're on our way, on our way to Grandpa's farm. Down on Grandpa's farm, there is a big brown cow, etc., etc. So, um, I honestly don't know where the song originated. What I've been able to see is that it did originate as a South American song and was translated here. But it could well have been the other direction. Um, but that is a favorite. Okay, so here... I'm gonna see if I can. No, I can't. All right, never mind. Um, I was gonna share something else with you. All right, so here, Old MacDonald. Okay, how more prosaic of a preschool song could you get than Old MacDonald? Well, what I love is taking the kids to a different continent with Old MacDonald. Okay. Um, and if we were all together, we would all have different pictures of these different animals, and you would have to choose um, which one of them. And, and I will, for future uh, workshops, I will stick them right here on this slide. Um, so you would have to choose uh, the, the who was who and figure out which, which uh, name went with which animal. Um, but here is 
uh, things sound very different even in English in different countries, okay? So even that, sharing with kids that people speak English with different accents, people have different phrases, um, uh, you know, I love, what is it in South Africa? A traffic light is called a robot. Um, you know, so you drive down the street to the first robot and you turn left. You know, well, so an American is going, what? Um, you know, and just all kinds of different things within the language that we speak. So, okay. We're going to be right on time. <laughs> I'm going to stop my share, and I am going to tell you guys one of my favorite silly stories um, as a way to end, and then I think we will have five minutes um, for any questions or comments or thoughts. Um, you will get the, um, the handout, and Molly, you know what I realized? I'm so bad with this. Um, don't send out the handout I sent you. I'm going to put in links so that everybody can find those songs easily. So um, um, I'll, I'll, give it, I'll get it to Molly by noon, and you guys will have it after that. So story. This is a story that comes from Cuba, and it starts out, Una vez había una familia de ratones. Once upon a time, there was a family of mice. Había papá ratón. Mama raton, hermano raton, hermana raton, okay? And the kids right away, whether they know Spanish or not, they know who those people are. There was mom and dad and sister and brother mouse. And it was a beautiful day like it is today in Columbus. Not too hot, not too cold, sunny, a little bit of clouds. And they went out for a picnic. And they're walking along with all their picnic baskets, and they're singing, and they're having a great time. And they sit down and have this wonderful meal under a bush. And they're relaxing in the shade, and Papa Raton goes, <sighs> Papa goes to sleep. And sister and brother <clears throat> are a little bored, you know, they want to play. So they said, Mama, can we go play over there by that fence? And Mama says, oh, of course, definitely. But just watch out. Senor Gato lives over there. Just be careful. And hermana, hermano, they just tell Mama, don't worry. Of course, we'll be careful. And they go running off over there to the fence, and they're playing, playing, playing. And Brother Mouse says to Sister, do you actually know who Senor Gato is? And Sister says, no. I, I've never actually seen Senor Gato. I've seen pictures of him on the computer, but I don't really know who he is. And, and Brother says, well, there's that thing over there on the other side of the fence. Do you, do you think that's Senor Gato? It's got, like, pointy ears and... It seems like it's got long whiskers, but it's asleep. I don't know why we'd need to be afraid of it. And sister looks through the fence and she says, That is! That's just like the picture I saw on the computer. That's Senor Gato. And, and, um, and sister says, Let's play a joke on it. And brother says, No, 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 no. That's not a good idea. And sister, and sister says, Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch, watch. Okay? Now this, of course, is the part that um, kids like the best. And um, brother and sister look at Senor Gato, and they go, Senor Gato! <laughs> Which you can't do during COVID, because forget it with germs, right? Okay. Um, it's a pre-COVID story. So, <laughs> and a post-COVID story. So, so sister and brother are laughing, 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 and Senor Gato doesn't move. So brother says, let's do it again. <laughs> well, finally, Senor Gato picks up his head. And he looks through the fence and he sees those two tiny mice. And he stands up 
and he's walking towards the fence. And sister and brother are a little worried now on the other side of the fence, but Senor Gato takes a leap, a flying leap, but he doesn't quite calculate right, and he smacks into the fence, and he falls down the fence, and <gasps> sister and brother are laughing, laughing, laughing. But he backs up again. And now he takes a flying leap, and he lands on top of the fence. And he is looking down on those mice. And they turn around and they run, 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 run. Mama, Papa, Mama, Papa, send your gato, send your gato, send your gato. And they're running, running, running. Papa stands up from his sleep and he goes, send your gato. Yo no tengo miedo de send your gato. Donde esta? Send your gato. And Papa backs up and he hides behind Mama. And brother and sister are running, 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 and they get behind Mama too. So now Mama Mouse is standing there, one whole inch of her, and she stands up on her back paws, just like the mice in my house when they're talking to my cat. She stands up on her back paws, and she looks at that cat who's loping at her, and she says, Ruff! 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 Now, Senor Gato, here's a dog but he can't see a dog. That's the worst kind of dog. So he turns around and he runs back over that fence and is never seen from again. And mama turns around to her family and she says, you didn't know I spoke dog, did you? It is always important to speak other languages. The end. <laughs> Now, of course, the problem with that story, like as I'm telling it, I'm like, the problem with this story is that we're not teaching that cats and mice can get along. But of course, in nature, you know. Anyway, so, so with, um, with that, I want to, of course, remind you guys, that, by the way, is um, a, a folk story, as I said, from um, Cuba called The Barking Mouse. And there is a picture book that you can find at libraries. Um, you know, as every storyteller, my version's a little different, but um, it's very fun and kids love it. So, of course, the other idea with different is not dangerous is to always add in the visual. All right. This, and these are just like, these are, you know, a couple books that I have. This is one that I've actually turned into a song, All Are Welcome, and it's great because it's people of different ethnicities, people of different color, people of um, di different ways of dressing, different food. I mean, it's all kind of laid out in here. Um, and then these are just language books, okay? Hello World, um, Say Hello, and it's also beautiful story of moving through a neighborhood with people of different colors and backgrounds. Um, this is just about different is not dangerous. I don't know how many of you know this book, The Crayon Box That Talked. Um, these will be in the handout, okay? And this, does anybody know this book? Okay. So to me, this is my um, reminder always of how to be a teacher. <laughs> how to be a teacher when children are being bullied or teased because something about them seems different. And um, I love how there's two different teachers in this story. One of them pays absolutely no attention to what is going on in the classroom. And the other one, the music teacher, is right on top of it, all right? So, um, and you know, there are book lists everywhere now of books to uh, reinforce anti-bias, anti-racism, and the opposite of anti-bias and, and anti-racism, as far as I'm concerned, is inclusion, pro-inclusion. Whether the person comes from a different country, has a different skin color, is neurologically wired differently, it's all about let's make room for everybody. So I'm going to stop talking. It's 1128. <laughs> all right. Does anybody have any questions for Joni? And like I said, we're going to send out, um, we'll send out the PowerPoint, we'll send out the recording, and we'll send out um, the handout with the updated links um, later on, either today or tomorrow. Um, sometimes the, the recording takes a little bit of time to compress. Um, I see a thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. 
thank you, Art Possible Ohio, for making this possible. Thank and you, Joni. I'm going to just... Available for everyone. Okay, and it doesn't look like anyone... Another thank you. Um, and if you do have any questions, like if you are like me and later on today something occurs to you and you're just like, oh, I should have asked that. Um, our email address is really easy. It's info, like the first part of information, I-N-F-O, at artpossibleohio.org. And of course, when I send out the information, you'll have our email address and you can feel free to email me any questions and I can pass them on to Joni or link you up with her as a resource. Yeah, you can just so, give people my email. And yep. the email and my contact information is on the handout. Perfect. Um, All so right, well, Ruth, thank you. Yeah, Ruth asked, um, just tomorrow's workshop is called It's Cool to Be Kind. Yes. So um, it's much more specific. It's not using other languages. It's much more direct teaching about anti-bullying and pro-inclusion. Um, so, and it's at the same, it, it is also, same time tomorrow. Yeah, same time tomorrow. And it's also a whole collection of songs and stories and games to play with kids. Um, so, you know, that the material is kid oriented. Excellent. Okay. Right. It's 1131. So thank you, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and log us off. Hopefully I, we see most of you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.